And uh, I, I hope that y'all can hear me. Let's see. All right. If you guys can hear me, then um, let me know. Shout out to Eric Person who said, I drew a fib on my health and I'm bouncing in golden pocket short or long. What do you mean by that, bro? What do you mean? Not too sure. Yeah. Yeah, guys, so so like I was saying, the, the goal of this stream is going to be a little bit different than normal. I'm basically going to be reverse engineering two of my successful shorts that I took this week, literally from the exact top, walking you through my thought process, walking you through the technical analysis I did to, to find those trade setups, the confirmations I was looking for in order to actually pull the trigger, and hopefully then this will, this will help some people do the same in the future. So stand by, and we will be live in about two minutes. All right, y'all, let's, let's get right into this. So what's going on, guys? Um, today, as I was saying, I want to basically re -en reverse engineer two of my trades uh, because I really think that uh, this could help a lot of people. I get so many questions about people asking me, how do you find levels? How do you know if the level is going to be respected? How do you know when to enter the trade? How do you know when to pull the trigger? So hopefully this, uh, this will help some of you who have been asking me those questions. And honestly... Uh, the content that I'm about to share in this video is, is good stuff. So if you've got some time and if you've got some attention, I really think you can get a lot out of this. Um, yep, here we are down here in the TA dungeon, you know, where we make them gains. Blessings to everybody in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Messiah. I do hope that each one of you are very blessed. And so today I want to be talking about how I shorted XRP right here. And I also want to talk about how yesterday I shorted Solano, interestingly enough, right up here. Um, and if you're in the VIP Discord, you already know how I did this stuff. You already know how I did this stuff because these are trade setups that I did post in the Discord. Um, you know, the, the XRP short, for example, um, let's see, posted that one a while ago, right? Um, I mean, that trade was up. 230% uh, massive short, posted the setup back on September, uh, August 31st, posted the setup on August 31st, where I was looking to short the exact level of $1.4378, and we can see that the uh, the short itself, uh, $1.4378, where was I looking to short from? A dollar forty-three seven eight. I ended up getting in about a dollar forty-one twenty-five. So not the exact exact top, but pretty dang close. And then the um, the Solano trade. If you're in the VIP Discord, then yesterday I did a I did a stream, a private stream, where I was looking at this specific trade setup to short from about two hundred and thirteen dollars, um, and you know. Basically, I ended up shorting it from $214, and it's up 132%. It's funny because this is the first Solano trade I've ever taken, and that thing is is ex extremely bullish. 
And so the first trade I take actually happens to be a short trade and a very successful short trade. So I kind of want to reverse engineer this stuff um, because not only is it good for myself, it actually is really good to reverse engineer your, your successful trades. A lot of people, they actually they reverse engineer their bad trades to figure out where things went wrong. Sometimes it's good to go back and reverse engineer your good trades. When I say sometimes, I mean, it's, it's always a good idea to go back and reverse engineer your good trades because then you can see things that you may have missed. You probably missed some other kind of confirmation that was telling you it was a good trade to take. Um, and it just kind of lets you know what, what kind of brain space you need to be in um, in the future, in the future. So those are the, the two trades that I, I want to talk about. Um, let me pop into the chat real quick here. Guys, make sure to like the video and uh, make sure to um, share the video. Let's 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 get let's get 750 likes today. I think today could be the day where um, you know we we can we can get 750 likes on the stream during the stream, so I can give away 0.025 Bitcoin, which is a little over $1,100 right now. So all I want to do is give away the. Uh, all I want to do is give away eleven hundred dollars on here, but uh, I guess I guess people just don't want it. That's okay. That's okay. So let's talk about first this uh, this Ripple trade. Okay, when I had approached the charts to enter this Ripple short, I was uh, in a long trade already. I had longs Ripple from down here, longs Ripple from right down here, and. The way I got into that ripple long was, um, well, it doesn't matter for the, for the scope of this video, but I had noticed something. If we go back to the Discord, when I let's let's look at the initial setup that I was looking at here. The initial setup was this. I, I saw that we were we were printing this uh, this triangle right here, and I saw that this triangle, if we were to break out of the triangle. If we were going to break out of the triangle, uh, the target, the technical target for that triangle would have smashed right into a 618 and a weekly level. So if you open up the chart, and this is just what you see, this was back on the last day of September. So we can go back to the Ripple chart here, and we can go back in time using our back in time tool here to the last day of September. Uh, I'm sorry, the last day of August, which was uh, August 31st, let's say here. And I am on the, I was on uh, a higher time frame looking at that. Um, but yeah, I was looking at this here, and basically I, I noticed, okay, look, we, we've got some kind of triangle forming right here. Now, a lot of people, they, they exclude patterns from their technical analysis because um, some people feel like they're too good for patterns. But patterns, although I'm not a big fan of trading patterns, I'm a big fan of using patterns not to trade the actual breakout or breakdown of the pattern, although sometimes I do. But usually, it's to give me confluence with another level that I would be looking to trade. So when I first open up the Ripple chart and I see this, I'm looking for... A pattern. I'm like, okay, looking for a pattern. What can I see here? And I notice that we've got this. We've got this triangle forming. Okay. And then what I do is I take the trend line from the top of the triangle to the bottom, and I just do this, right? Uh, normal old technical target. And um, well, before we do that, I'm, I just understand that there's a pattern here. There's a pattern that could break out. And then what I'm doing is I'm looking on my chart for levels that could potentially be an area of interest. So what I like to do first, especially if I'm trading an altcoin, because the thing is, guys, I, I don't use, I just started getting back into altcoins. I just started getting back into trading Ripple. Just yesterday, I started trading Solano, riding the Soul Train. Shout out to everyone in the Discord, by the way, riding the Soul Train. There's a lot of people in there riding the Soul Train. And by the way, if you guys do want to join the Discord, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash... Jason Casper, and um, shout out to Alchemist who came here to like, and shout out to Memory Man. Guys, let's let's see if we can share the stream to get some more folk in here. I really do want to. I I've been waiting to give, <laughs> I'm waiting to give away this Bitcoin for a long time, guys. 
I've been waiting to give it away. I'm going to do another giveaway if I ever get to 100,000 subscribers. Um, but yeah, so if you're going to approach a chart that you've never really looked at before and, and you're kind of unfamiliar with the where price is going, how things move, the first thing I like to do is go to the weekly time frame and just see if there are any weekly levels of support and resistance. And the way you're going to get those levels is you are going to go back um, in time and you're just going to find areas where price has found a sticking point, basically. So you're looking at the weekly candles, you're going to try and find areas where price has tried to wick above or below a certain area for two weeks in a row and, and was unable to. So for example, right here, we have a level here where for two weeks in a row, price was trying to come above this level and wicked up and then the candle body closed here. And then again, this second week, tried to come above it, but then uh, we couldn't. And the candle body opened here and was, was unable to come above, right? And so that is a weekly level of support uh, or, or resistance, right? And this would be one here as well, right? You guys see how I'm doing that? I'm just finding the, the, the places where the, where the candles don't, um, where they uh, where they try for two weeks in a row to wick above a certain level and are unable to. And then again, I see one right here uh, at about um, you know 1.2862. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, so th those are those are a few ones that I see here. And um, then what I also like to do is I like to pull some fibs out from you know the swing high to the swing low of a specific area right here. And what I really am doing is when I'm looking at these levels, I'm looking for areas of confluence. I'm looking for areas of confluence where there's more than one thing pointing to the same area that says this is a good place to take a trade. And so if I'm approaching a chart that is a, an asset that I've never traded before, I'm looking for an area where I think to myself, okay, if price gets to that area, I would really like to take a short from it. I would really like to take a short from it, okay? And so right now, we can see that, um, you know, this area right here, it, for example, if price ever comes to 1.41, this is an area that I would, I would, you know, I would like to take a short there. I would absolutely like to to short that level um, because we have a weekly level of resistance and we have a golden pocket. So when I'm looking at this trade setup here, right, this is exactly what I'm seeing. I pulled the golden pocket from the high to the low. I saw that we had a triangle forming and that triangle, if we just take our you know, basic, basic technical analysis, like the first thing most people ever learn is about how to find patterns. And we just, let's, uh, let's back up here for a little bit. Whoops. And we just kind of draw this, right? This triangle type pattern. Then uh, if we just take our target from the, from here down to here, and we just drag that right here, we can see that the target for this triangle also happens to be smack dab on that golden pocket and that weekly level. And so this is before I'm like looking at market cipher. This is before I am even thinking about entering a trade. I'm just analyzing the chart and I'm thinking to myself, where would I like to enter a short? If price ever gets to a certain area, where would I like to enter? And so just by doing some basic TA, looking at weekly levels, looking at this golden pocket, looking at this triangle, I have three areas of confluence for this level. So now what that tells me is this. I'm going to take note of that level. It doesn't mean I'm automatically going to enter a trade there. It means if price gets to that level, then I'm going to look at my indicators. That's when I'm going to look at Market Cipher, say, what is Market Cipher saying? Market Cipher is going to be the thing that gets me into the trade but the level itself is something that I need to be ready for and interested in. So what I do and what I did do is if you know that you're interested in this level right here, then what you're going to do is you're going to set an alert. You're going to put a vertical, I'm sorry, a horizontal line right before price gets there. You're going to go ahead and add an alert on that line. And I can't do it in replay mode, but then you're going to lock and hide that line so that it doesn't clutter up your chart. So as price 
breaks out of the triangle, if it does, because we don't know, and it gets close to your target, you have an alert now on your phone. And you know, okay, it's time to go look at the chart. It's time to, um, it's time to see what's going on on, on Market Cipher. And by the way, guys, if, if, if anybody doesn't know how to get these levels, how to get weekly levels, how to use fibs, how to do all this stuff, check out jasoncaspertrading.com because this course is kind of a comprehensive course. I mean, obviously, it's not going to touch on every little aspect of TA, but if you're newer, if you're struggling to become consistent, this will definitely lay the groundwork and give you a strategic, methodical approach to technical analysis. It's changing the way um, thousands of people are approaching these markets. Even if you've never looked at a chart before, we go through TA from the very beginning, going through how to use Market Cipher in extreme detail, giving you at least six trading strategies that I use with much success, teaching you how to create and test your own strategy, and more importantly, teaching you risk management so that even if you're, let's say you're not the best trader in the world, if you have your risk management on point, you can actually lose more trades than you win and still be profitable over time because that's the power of risk management. There's actually a 30% discount in the description, still have a few slots left. Um, you know, uh, let me just, let me, oh wait, um, actually it's not in the description of this video. It's not in the description of this video. But I do know the coupon code is new content special because I um, I created new content for the course last week and um, oops I spelled special wrong I spelled spatial new content special thirty percent off the course also guys if you do want twenty five percent off market cipher CryptoFace hooked it up you can use my affiliate link here and um, get 25% uh, off with the code JIMBO. 25% off JIMBO. I don't know how long that's good for. Also, guys, the private Discord, if you do want to join, is at my Patreon, so you can do that here. Um, yeah, so check out uh, the course if, if, you're, if you're newer to trading. But so, so with this Ripple trade, right, there are three things now pointing to this one level. And really, if you're analyzing a new coin, your goal should be to find areas both above and below where price is currently trading, where you say to yourself, if price ever happens to get there, because we can't know for sure where price is going to go, but this is how we create a plan. This is how we create plans on how we're going to trade. We should have in our arsenal for any given asset that we're interested in trading a plan if price dumps or if price pumps. And, you know, this is just the example of the trade I took. But, um, you know, look at this, though, a cup and handle also. This is just an example of a trade I took. But I also, and you guys know, because I, I, I went over this TA in the VIP streams, but I had I have plans to long lower levels. I have plans to short higher levels. If you're approaching a new asset or any asset, what you should be doing when you do your analysis is you should be coming up with a plan saying, okay, right now there might not be a good trade to enter, but if price gets up here, I will be looking for a short. If price gets up here, I will be looking for a short. Let's say if price comes down here, I'm going to be looking for a long. And that way, it takes a lot of the pressure off because you can just approach a chart at any time. And once you do your analysis, and of course, you're going to keep doing it you know, every week or so do it fresh to see if there's a new opportunity. And there's different strategies you can use too, right guys? Like yesterday I entered an Ethereum trade. It wasn't really based on any technical analysis besides just me looking at Market Cipher saying, "Hey, we have a we have a 4 hour 24 minute setup coming up right here where I saw we're about to print a green dot in the 4 hour, just kind of, you know, predicting what Market Cipher is going to do. Um you know, if uh if we get this, uh, you know, I'm basically saying, I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm predicting. I'm saying if we get a green dot on the four hour and then we get something like this on the 24 minute where this top wave prints a red dot and then prints a green dot right here as the money flow crosses up, then I would enter the trade. And I mean, that's, that's pretty much exactly what happened. We can see here on the 24 minute, we came down, we printed a green dot above the zero line as the money flow is still crossing up. And, you know, we entered the trade. There's, there's always good opportunities to take trades. But having a plan in advance is, um, 
having a plan in advance is something that can really help you, especially if you if you suffer from over trading, uh, you know, because then you always have something in your arsenal ready to go. And so, what are we going to look at when we actually get to that level? So Monday night, Monday evening, around 6 p.m., I got an alert on my phone saying uh, XRP is coming up to the level. And so, what do I do? I open up good old, uh, good old, uh, good old uh, market cipher. And um, shout out to Josh Compton, by the way, who has three green trades today out of four. That's awesome. Shout out to Crypto Pump it, Algo. He's trading Algo and it's flying. I need to get into trading Algo. So we'll, we'll, we'll cancel out of this replay mode here. And we'll just take a look at what actually we were seeing as price was coming up to that level. Now you can see as soon as we hit that level, we get a, we get a very, very large drop off, right? A very large drop off. And um, it's like, wow, that's, that's, that's pretty intense. Not every short is going to be like that, guys. But when they are like this, it's really nice. And then it's like, wow, wow. You know, I did the analysis and look at how it turned out. It turned out well. You have the plan and you stick to it. So as we are getting up to that level, what do we see? What we are looking for when we are getting to our level is first thing we want to do, what I like to do is I like to look at Market Cipher on the four hour time frame. I like to look at Market Cipher on the four hour time frame because the four hour time frame is really going to tell us the overall environment of the market. When we see price coming up to our level, we can see that the four hour time frame is about to print a red dot. This is telling us that we are about to have a shift in momentum from a very strong uptrend that we had down here when we printed the green dot to now we're either going to consolidate or come down a little bit. Notice what happens every time we print a red dot on market cipher B. We either consolidate or come down a little bit or both. In fact, we could have just shorted these red dots and had kind of good shorts each time. In fact, this right here, we did hit a golden pocket for that move to the downside as well. But I didn't take that short because I was still swing long. And so the first thing we want to see as we come to the level is, is the four hour time frame telling me that we're, it's more probable that we continue upwards or more probable that we come down? I understand money flow is getting thick, but because we're just looking for a short, you know, potentially even just a scalp trade, and we have our take profits set in a way where we're definitely not going to lose money, um, you know, because we're going to take profits early and move the stop loss to the entry. Four hours topping out. So we're like, okay, now let's look at a lower time frame and kind of see what are the lower time frames telling us. We come down to the two hour, and the two hour is actually giving us a slight bearish divergence on the uh, on the two hour time frame. And actually, you know, right here we can see from the high, th this wave is giving us a very slight bearish divergence. And we can also see that from back here to here, the two hour is also giving us a bearish divergence where price is making higher highs while momentum is making lower highs. So not only is the four hour telling us we either need to consolidate or come down, but now the two hour is telling us that we're, we're actually starting to lose steam in the trend. The trend is weakening. The money flow is getting thinner on the two hour as price gets higher. The momentum waves are getting shorter as the price comes higher. We come down to the one hour time frame. What do we see on the one hour time frame? Bearish divergences, intense bearish divergences, okay? And we can also see the money flow getting, um, getting thinner, right? If we connect the tops of the money flow to each other, we see that the money flow is printing a lower high. The momentum waves are printing lower highs as price is forming a higher high right into our level that we already knew from a week in advance was a level of confluence. It was a FIB level. It was a weekly level. It was the technical target of a triangle breakout. Then we come down to even lower time frames, maybe come down to the 24 minute. What do we see on the 24 minute? Bearish divergences. Money flow coming down. Go down to a lower time frame, 12 minute. What do we see? We see bearish divergence. In fact, as we are literally hitting into our exact area of resistance, we see a bearish divergence on the momentum waves and the money flow. And then we come down even lower, the six minute. What do we see? We see, well, this is a little tricky here, right? Because the six minute looks like this momentum wave is a little bit higher, but we have to just look at it in context, understanding that the higher time frames are telling us we're coming down. Then on the six minute, we can do something like this. And we can also pull and just look at where money flow is heading in general, right? Heading down. And this is telling us, okay, 
enter a short. Honestly, th this is telling me to enter a short. Uh, the three minute time frame as well has the bearish divergence and then even down to the very one minute time frame we can see that we are getting the divergences the whole way down. Now, you have to keep in, in context in the back of your mind here, guys, that when we're looking at these lower time frames, it might not always look so obvious to you that we are getting the divergences if the higher time frames are also diverging. And the reason for that is because we're zooming in. We're zooming in on something that's already printing on a higher time frame. So instead of just looking at the two momentum waves that are next to each other, on the lower time frames, we actually need to uh, take a different approach. We need to be looking at money flow over time on the lower time frames. Money flow over time, which we can see is coming down, right? We can see that the green, every time the green waves print, they're getting lower and lower. We can also see that every time the purple waves print, they're getting lower and lower, which is telling us money is leaving the asset. And then even on the one minute, even though we print this massively high wave as we touch our resistance, we also need to understand market cipher B, those momentum waves are linked to how fast the price moves. So if you see a massive divergence from this momentum wave coming down to here, right, you can almost ignore this last momentum wave on the one minute as long as, as long as we see clearly the one hour, the 24 minute, the 12 minute, and the six minute are all getting those divergences. Okay, so that's going to be our entry signal. The divergences across all the time frames. And if you see those divergences, guys, that tells me two things. And this is, how I, this is how I like to enter the trade, okay? First of all, if I have all this confirmation, I will use very high leverage. I will use very high leverage. I will not risk more than 1% of my total account, okay? But I will still use high leverage. What I will do is I will take 1% of my total trading capital and I will leverage it up maybe 30x so that I can actually use 30% of my total trading capital. I can put 30% of my total trading capital in contracts onto a trade while only risking 1%. So if I'm risking 2% of my whole account for on a trade, then if I'm 30x leveraging, I could put 60% of my total portfolio onto the trade and still only risk 2%. And for more information on that, I go over it in the course. I also have free videos on risk management on my channel, but risk management is very important. So then what I can do is I can enter a short. I don't even have to use a stop loss at first because I know if I get stopped out, I'm only risking 1% plus fees of my account, right? If I get liquidated, I'm only risking 1% plus fees. But then what I like to do is, you know, I like to enter the trade and I immediately give it some playing room. I usually don't put a stop loss. If you're going to put a stop loss when you're shorting, trying to short the exact top, you don't know exactly when the top is. But because you have your confirmations, you know it's somewhere around here, right? So a lot of times, if I'm going to put a stop loss, I'll put like 50% stop loss, 5-0%. That way it gives me some playing room. And I know we have a lot of room to like have the volatility before we come down. And again, I'm only risking 1% of my account. So if I get liquidated, it's not going to be a huge loss. But I've already loaded the dice. I've loaded the dice by saying, look, this is a level of confluence. There's three things pointing to this level. I have confirmations that were coming down in the four hour, the two hour, the one hour, the 24 minute, the 12 minute, the six minute, the three minute, and the one minute. And so I'm pretty confident here. I know I'm only risking 1% of my capital. So even if I lose, who cares? Might as well go for it, right? Might as well go for it. I mean, there's risks everywhere in life. This is all about mitigating the risk and putting the probabilities in your favor as much as possible. And so I usually don't even use a stop loss at first, or I'll use a very, very loose stop loss, maybe 75%. And what happens is when we start to come down, this is where I will then take maybe 15% of the profit out of the trade, 10, 15%, and then move the stop loss right to my entry. Now, what this does is this guarantees that I am winning the trade no matter what. It will guarantee that I will not exit this trade with less money in my account than when I started the trade. And keep in mind, guys, I also try to limit in as much as possible. So that's another thing. When I see price coming to my level, I'm setting a limit order here. I'm setting a limit order at my level. I might split it up into two or three limit orders to kind of dollar cost average in, but I'm setting limit orders up here. And I'm hoping these limit orders get filled, knowing that I'm probably going to be in drawdown for a little bit. Like if this is my level, you know, I'm expecting we're going to come up a little bit above it, right? Get some FOMO and then lose the level. So I usually enter, I'm in drawdown for a little bit. And then what happens is, 
Uh, once we start to come down, I will take 10%, 15%, limit 10 or 15% out of the trade post only, right? So I'm not paying fees. I'm actually in Bybit getting paid a little for it. Then move the stop loss to the entry, which then is a risk-free trade, okay? Trading this way, the way I just outlined for you, for this short, if you only focus on taking trades like this, I can't guarantee anything, and this is not financial advice, right? Y'all, you guys know this ain't no financial advice, y'all. This ain't no financial advice. But um, what this is, is this is basically me showing you how, how you can really mitigate the risk as much as possible and um, put the probabilities in your favor as much as possible. And once you're in profit, ensuring that you are going to have more money in your account at the end of the trade than when you started as, as often as possible, right? And then you just set your take profits along the way down. And so, you know, that's, that's kind of how I did it. And in hindsight, this trade was a really, really, really nice trade. It was actually a super nice trade. It was up at one point, 230%. This is, I still have it open, by the way. Who knows if we dump more, you know, I could, I could get more profits out of here. Now, the second trade I took was a Solano trade. This trade was a little bit different. Um, I actually shorted it twice. I shorted it once from 213. This is a riskier entry. Granted, this was a riskier entry. The safer entry was this one when I shorted it again from 214. And for this trade, you know, for the Solano trade, the, uh, the stream that I did yesterday was basically, I, I was simply, I, I only had one area of confluence. I simply had one area of confluence, which was this. We were coming up to a FIB extension level, a 1.272 FIB level. And so I approached the Solano charts yesterday. And, um, you know, again, I, I short the second short. I'm going to focus on the second short because, honestly, that was the more responsible trade to take. I shorted it from here, and then I shorted it from here. Um, so yesterday, I'm doing some TA on Solano, and it looks like momentum's coming back up, guys. Even though I still have the short open, a very, very small portion, a very small portion. I, I have less, I think it's about 20% of my uh, initial portion because I was scared to death shorting Solano, guys. In hindsight, I can talk about it calmly, but uh, if you were with me in the Discord last night, I was talking about how much of a rush it was. It, it almost felt like a gamble when you, when you look at this chart. And you decide you're going to take a short, right? <laughs> and the reason I did it is simply because I, I was getting my confirmations. But it, it was a psychological game because, uh, you know, people always talk about, you know, if you're going to short Solano, you're going to get wrecked or whatever. And so, you know, basically I'm, I'm looking at this coin here and I'm, I'm, I took out a fib and I just pulled it from this swing high to this swing low here. And it's hard to really find any good areas of resistance when we're in price discovery mode. So what I did was I just double-clicked the FIB and I turned on um, some FIB extension levels. And I noticed that we had this, this FIB level up here, the 1.272. And I'm like, all right, this is a short I would take. This is a short I would take. If price comes up to here, to that FIB level, and on the one-hour time frame, actually, this was the four-hour time frame I was looking at. I was like, yeah, if we get bearish divergences on the four-hour time frame and under, I will take this short, okay? Uh, I know a lot of people took this short as well in the Discord, so shout out to y'all, killing it up in there. And so what happens? Well, on the four hour, we come up to that level, and we are printing a bearish divergence on the four hour time frame. Now keep in mind, the bearish divergence is not confirmed yet, but we can see it printing, which is important. We come down to the one hour. What do we see on the one hour? On the one hour now, is much more clear that we're printing a bearish divergence, right? It's much more clear. And not only is momentum coming down, but money flow is also coming down on the one hour, showing us that, okay, we're printing a bearish divergence, this uptrend is starting to look weak, and we're coming into an area of FIB resistance, okay? So then we come down to a lower time frame. Let's go to the 12-minute. Now check this out. Check this out. This is super important. Now, again, I shorted it here, and uh, this was a premature short in my opinion because we didn't have confirmation on the 12-minute. You guys see this? We did not have a bearish divergence on the 12-minute on my first short. Uh, we did not. And so it was honestly more of a gamble. I have to be honest with you guys. Um, bad, bad Jason. Bad Jason. Okay. 
It was more of a gamble. The second opportunity, which I didn't know if we were going to get, I was honestly, because here's the thing, guys. When you have more experience trading, you kind of know that at every FIB level, you're going to have some kind of opportunity for something, right? <laughs> for something. I mean, you know, the first time we come to a FIB level, um, you're always going to have some kind of opportunity for something. Uh, it might not be the best thing, but something, right? So, um, you know, for example, we just take, we're looking at our FIB from the swing high to the swing low. Um, whoa. Uh, hang on one second, guys. Hang on one second. What's going on with the Bitcoin here? Okay. Bitcoin <laughs> is uh, looking like we could potentially, uh, maybe not. Let's see what's going on. Time for just 12 minute. Six minute, looking pretty, looking pretty bullish. Let's come to the one hour here. Uh, interesting, interesting. Okay, yeah, not too interested. Not too interested in a short here. Um, let me just check one thing. I usually don't do this on live streams, but I'm getting trade alerts. Uh, yeah, I'm not really interested in shorting it, but hey, we might we might dump from here. I don't know. We might. We're getting a rejection. We're getting a rejection right from this line that says the chickens are drinking. Could have shorted it. Could have shorted that. Could have been a nice scalp in hindsight, right? Could have been. Should have. Should have shorted it now in hindsight. Look, we come up above here, and we reject right off the wick. Man. Well, on to the next trade, right? But, um, see, I didn't have divergences here. Didn't have divergences. I guess you could say this is a divergence in hindsight, right? Hindsight's twenty twenty, guys. But this is definitely not a divergence. Oh, wait, that is a divergence. Yeah, that's a divergence. But this is not. Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm getting distracted. The first time we come up to the level, there's no bearish divergence. But the second time, we actually come in and put in a higher high. We put in a higher high. And then we actually put in a lower high on Market Cipher B on the 12-minute. Okay. So all signs now are pointing that we're going to short. Right. All signs now are pointing that we're coming down because we have the divergence on the 4-hour, the 2-hour, the 1-hour. We had it on the 24 minute. Um, well, actually, we didn't have it on the 24 minute, but we had it on the 12 minute. And I would say, if 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 it's on the higher time frames and then it's on the 12 minute, that's that's a pretty good sign. And then on the six minute, of course, as we came in to put in that higher high, look at this money flow coming down, momentum waves coming down, boom. This was the signal to me to enter the short, right? Enter the short, and so I enter. And I have my take profit set, my limit order set along the way down, and two of them got hit. My second uh, take profit was right down here. The reason it was here, simply because we had an area of uh, resistance right here. Uh, around 196 it was, so that was uh, more like right up here. We had this area of resistance. We come in, hit my second take profit, and I still have the trade open, guys. And I still have more take profits lower. I also still have the ripple trade open. But that's kind of how I approach the charts, especially a, a new asset that I've never traded before. And, um, you know, the, the, uh, this, is, this is really how I'm doing it, really. I'm just looking at the areas of confluence, and then when we get to that area, looking at market cipher for divergences, stuff like that. Okay. Now, right here, honestly, this is probably, in hindsight, a, a, a good, uh, you know, it's too late to go back and do what I was going to do, right? If you miss an entry, you miss an entry. But, um, you know, we've got this little local range going on here. But uh, let's see what happens. Actually, I was kind of, you know, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let me pop into the chat real quick and uh, see what's going on. we got about 300 people in here, only 158 likes. Guys, like the video. Subscribe to the channel. If we... Um, if we can get 750 likes, I will give away 0.025 Bitcoin. Will we be able to give away 0.025 Bitcoin? Only if every single person watching calls up their mom and says, Mom, 
please come like this video. Please come like this video. Juan Francisco Torres says, is it better to take the course having Market Cipher or is it useful if you don't have Market Cipher? It's useful if you don't have Market Cipher, but um, I, I think it's highly recommended. It's highly recommended. It's, it's highly recommended. Um, let's see here. Helvetica Freezes says, uh, when a coin is pumping like SOL, TA is out the window. Well, that's that's not true, right? That's totally not true. Because, um, you know, we got the short here just using some TA. TA is never out the window, but you have to be strategic about it. And, you know, there, there's a lot of times you'll find that if a coin is pumping, you just you simply can't do TA. Because if you come to a weekly time frame like this, well, there's no weekly levels on the chart besides way down here. And there's very few daily levels on the chart, right? And uh, there's not much to work with, right? There's, not, there's really not much to work with. But um, if you can find something and then you can use Market Cipher for confluence, then, um, you know, it can work out. This is actually the Jason Casper like button chart, everybody. You can see it's gone completely parabolic. There's no use shorting the like button. Everybody make sure to FOMO into the Jason Casper like button. Go ahead and like this video. Hex Hoddle says uh, he told us the dump was incoming. And, uh, yeah, look at that, guys. Look at this. That is a kind of a juicy scalp. I kind of, uh, you know, unfortunately missed it, guys. I had an alert set. <laughs> I missed it. Doing a stream plus. Didn't, um, man, look at this bearish div on the three-minute. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that would have been a good scalp in hindsight, guys. Yeah, look at this. Money flow coming down in one minute. Momentum coming down in one minute. Yep. Well, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's okay. I'm already short on Bitcoin. I'm already short on Bitcoin from... Um, this is my Ripple trade. I'm already short on Bitcoin from 52800 And I'm long on Bitcoin from 43.6. So I'm in a good place... If I miss a scalp, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You know what? That's all right. Man, but look at that. That is nuts, right? We reject right off the level. Right off the level. Shout out to Luis Rivera. He is in 1,695th place out of the 19,000 participants in the World Trading Series on Bybit. That's awesome, man. Shout out to Crypto Pumpet, who's done most of my course and uses Market Cipher. See you later, uh, XRP. I'm not really doing analysis today, but um, I am, I am doing um, uh, just kind of uh, breaking down how I, how I was able to get some good trades, kind of reverse engineering the thought process. What's up, Daniel Jankowski? Um, First Coast Crypto. My course currently does not cover that, but um, I do plan on making some content on that in the future, for sure. Uh, do I offer copy trading on XBT or Bybit? No, I currently do not. I don't know if Bybit allows that, but um, what I do do, do do, what I do do, and by the way, guys, also, you know, the thing is, if, if this, this might not be the end of the road for this short, right? We might, uh, we might come up for another another try and come take out that high and come down but anyway sorry i don't want to give away too many secret sauces on these public streams some people hate on me for it because uh you know because other people are, are in the are in the group here but um yeah i plan on making more content in the future yeah Club 430, got it. What did you get, Club 430? Any advice to overcome paralysis of analysis? Yeah, I know how to overcome it, Green Ninja 32. What you got to do is you got to simply use good risk management so that you know, hey, oh, I'm frozen. You got to use good risk management so that you know, hey, hey, even if I lose this trade, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world because I'm only risking 1% and I'll get the next one. 
And if you have your confirmations lined up and if you have the level, then you, don't, you really don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it because uh, you know you've loaded the dice. You see Market Cypher's telling you we're coming down if you're shorting. And uh, sorry, I thought I was going to yawn Oh, because I'm tired. I'm tired. And, um, you know, it's like, eh, if I lose, I lose. You have to be in the mindset of losses are going to happen. Trading is a, is a risk. That's one of the first things you have to be comfortable with taking risks if you're trading, right? If you feel desperate and if you're over leveraging and risking too much, then paralysis of analysis will really come in. And I guarantee you're going to get wrecked because paralysis of analysis will always lead you to do stupid things. Like not take a trade when you were supposed to and then FOMO in after you were supposed to and then get wrecked, right? That will happen. So I, I recommend good risk management to get over paralysis of analysis and then just go for it. Just go for it. Seriously. Like I just go for it. I go for it. I got my limit order set. I see the divergences. I'm going for it. Sometimes I do that a little bit too much. Like last night with the Solano, the first time I shorted it, I just went for it. Even though I kind of saw things eh, not looking as good as they should have, but it turned out all right. Um, yeah, Helvetica freeze as well. The yawns are contagious, right? Winter mode. How to short the top? Go back and watch the beginning of the stream because I go over it. it uh, I go over it. Now I'm just answering questions. Uh, winter mode. Uh, shout out to D Sousa who's just shorted ETH. Uh, the volume on Algo. No, I have not seen it. Crypto pump it. I have not even looked at an Algo chart in a long time. How is Ethereum doing, by the way? Since uh, somebody just shorted it. Um, Interesting, interesting. It's like at the top of a of a range here. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Interesting. It's kind of doing the same thing that the corn is doing. Yeah, it's doing the same thing that the corn is doing. I uh, would like to see a little bit higher for ETH if I'm going to short it, honestly. That's just me. Wow, look at that Solano, guys. Another another little dumperoni, dumperoni and cheese. Love me some macaroni and cheese. Love it, love it. First Coast Crypto says I have a problem of longing the top. Yeah, um, the best way to get over longing the top is just don't long when price is pumping. Like never long when price is pumping. That's how I got over longing the top. I stopped longing. I stopped longing when price is pumping. I only long when price is dumping. Only. And then I hold those longs until I can look back in hindsight and notice, wow, I longed Bitcoin at 34K and I'm still in the long. Nice. And the reason I longed it at 34K is because it was dumping down to that level. And uh, really, it just comes down to, it comes down to um, you know, when price is dumping, even if, you, even if you're not the best at TA, you know, Market Cypher will give you those confirmations. I mean, you know, even if I didn't have any levels marked on a chart for Solano, on the three-minute time frame, I could have just longed here based on a, on a, on a bullish divergence, right? Um, oh, wait, that's not a bullish divergence. Never mind. Never mind. But uh, I did a video the other day on my channel. If you, guys, uh, if you guys like YouTube, you can check out this YouTube channel called... Uh, you Check out this website called YouTube.com. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Go to the Jason Casper YouTube channel right here. And um, go to videos. This, this guy, he, he, makes some, he makes some good, uh, what? Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I got to go to, I got to go to my channel. This is wrong. This is, the, this is the back end. This guy makes some good content here. Go to this powerful trading strategy. High win rate. Market cipher strategy for beginners. Uh, check this out. You know, this, this will kind of show you how to long the bottom and short the top. Uh, but you're not going to get the most ninja entry in the world, but honestly, doing it with some, some good leverage, some low leverage, you could really do super well if you only use this strategy, trading Bitcoin. I cannot guarantee anything because this is not financial advice in any way, shape, or form, but I can say that um, if you combine good risk management with responsible leverage and only use this strategy, you will have the probabilities in your favor and you will find that you get trades near the bottom to long and near the top to short, right? This is the secret sauce right here, guys. This is the secret sauce, I'm telling you, the stuff that they put on the Big Macs, right? Nobody knows what's in it, right? 
Nobody knows. Hopefully it doesn't have human flesh in it. We wouldn't know. It's a secret. It's a secret. Yeah, let's see. Any more, any more questions over here? Who, who are we talking about? Who's too good? Who have we heard of him? Oh, are you talking about me? Oh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. Um, that's good, uh, Manuel. Those are some good supports right there for SOL. And if you miss a good entry, then you're SOL. Uh, Shalom to German um, e Aymar. Um, the DBSI shows at market cipher B. How do you get it back on your candles, Jason? Okay, what you got to do is you gotta you gotta close out your indicators, like close it out. It's down. It'll be down here. DBSI will be down here. Just click the X on it, and then open it up again up at the top. That's what you got to do. Why don't I have market cipher A activated? Um. I only really use Market Cipher A for the Blood Diamonds and the Yellow X's, and um, really, I've been ever since DBSI came out, I've been using that so much more than Market Cipher A because I just find it so much more useful than Market Cipher A. Market Cipher A, even like in the course, the way I use it, it's like reassurances. Like if I'm short and I see like a Blood Diamond, it's like okay, cool. There's another thing telling me that we might be coming down more. But uh, I don't really see any reason to keep it on the chart all the time. It just kind of clutters up the chart. And DBSI, I don't keep on all the time. I only keep it on when I'm trying to gauge like what's going to happen because it also clutters up the chart, and I like a nice, crisp, clean chart. So this is my default view when I'm trading is Market Cipher B and um, just regular candle. I mean, this is my default go-to. I will turn things on and off depending on you know if I need them, but in general, I, I don't. And you know, usually I do keep uh, Market Cipher A and uh, DBSI in my like up here um, I just haven't turned them on for Solano but I usually keep them up here ready to, to quickly turn them on and off like if I want to see okay what's going on for um, you know for SOL do I see anything juicy here do I see any blood diamonds you know I'm shorting do I see anything juicy and right now I say oh nope I don't and then if I want to turn on DBSI you know go ahead and turn it on and just kind of see all right uh, are we going to come up more or down more? Like I'm short right now. It looks like we have more bear strength than bull strength, so I might want to stay in my short, but then I'll turn it off because it just gets too sloppy with all these numbers on it, you know? A clean room is a happy room, guys. A clean room is a happy room. As you can see by my basement gym, man, I need to clean this. I need to clean this, guys. It, trading's tough, right? Because, you know, especially if your trading office is in your gym and you're working out, and, you know, all of a sudden you're getting trade alerts. You don't have time to clean up the gym. There's chalk on the floor. You still got chalk on your hands because you were deadlifting, you know, before the dang live stream. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to PJM. God bless you, PJM. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, first goes crypto. I, I prefer to pull the fib from wick to wick. I prefer to pull the fib from wick to wick. I know some people do from body to body. Um, I, if you're going to do one, you got to pick one, all right? Either do body to body or wick to wick. I always do wick to wick. That's how I do it. Uh, Lancer Evo, what do I think about Vu Manchu Cypher? Well, I think it's a ripoff of Market Cypher, and it is, it is messed up that somebody would do that, right, to take somebody's work and rip it off. But besides the point, I think that the money flow on that indicator is is messed up, and it, it will. It, the money flow is the most important part of market cipher because it will really help you get those good entries. You can see the money flow coming in and coming out. If you load them both up side by side, you will notice that there are extreme differences, and. Um, I can think of a number of really nice trades that I would have gone poorly if I had not been using Market Cipher and looking at the Market Cipher money flow. And I'm not just saying that, guys, because I affiliate with Market Cipher. I do affiliate with Market Cipher. But, um, you know, 
I would still use Market Cipher and not anything else, even if I was not affiliated with Market Cipher. I, this, this is my favorite indicator by far. I think the money flow on Market Cipher is something that will allow you to not have to look at, uh, you know, like of all people like looked like to look at CVD divergences and stuff like that. Um, you know. Even even looking at trapped longs and trapped shorts on extra charts and stuff like that, you can get that same information looking at Market Cipher. Now I know a lot of people will disagree with that, but trust me, I I look at extra charts. I look at Market Cipher. I look at VMC. Of all the tools that I have at my disposal, Market Cipher is by far my favorite because I can use it from my phone. I don't have to go to any other website. I could just use it right from the TradingView app. Um, it's very, very accurate. This will show you divergences on small time frames that you cannot even see if you are looking at, at CVD divergences on those lower time frames. Um, and it, it really all ha it, it has to do with the money flow. So, you know, just my personal preference. Honestly, if you're, if you're going to be doing this uh, long term, I would, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm all about the market cipher, the real market cipher. Can you get by with something else? Of course. Of course. People have been trading before Market Cypher was a thing. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you need it. But, um, you know, it's by far the best indicator that I've ever come across and the best trading tool. And I do not enter a single trade without, without looking at it. I do not enter a single trade without looking at Market Cypher. Um, Short XRP. Well, no, I was going back in time, bro. Uh, I wouldn't short it there again. Why don't I use hiking sheet candles? Because um, I just don't like them. Ahmad wants to know what is what is more important, um, 0.5 or golden pocket? Definitely the golden pocket. Um, if people want to know how to draw Fibonacci, it. Take take the trading course, guys, because this this goes into extreme detail. I, I don't have time to go into it in this stream, in the scope of this stream, right? Check it out. There's a thirty percent discount in the description. Thirty percent. Um, OVO Cal wants to know what exchange to use to long and short in the USA. Well, um, you know, I cannot give any kind of advice. I could just say follow the legal uh, laws in your area. Um, I do know there are certain exchanges out there that don't really require you to use a VPN, uh, including Femex. Uh, I know that KuCoin, you can also margin trade on KuCoin uh, in the United States. Um, so, you know, uh, go out there, do your research, uh, watch some other YouTubers who don't live in the USA, and they'll, they'll absolutely tell you how you can uh, do it. But, you know, for me in the USA, I got to follow the laws. I got to follow the, the, the laws in the United States and consult with your lawyer, consult with your accountant, you know, make sure you're following the law, guys. You know, we don't want to do anything that could incriminate us over here. Trend spider. It's the same thing as trading view. Interesting, interesting. That is interesting. I've never heard of Trend Spider. I've never heard of it, so I can't really. Why do I never talk about the RSI on Market Cipher? Well, the reason I never talk about the RSI on Market Cipher is because I, I really don't use the RSI on Market Cipher, and so, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Just uh, make stuff up, you know? So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, hang on one second, guys. I'm flopping and groping over here. All right, cool. Wax poetically. I don't know if I'm going to wax poetically. Uh, Jake S., what did you miss? You missed me going through how I, um, 
how I how I reverse engineer two of my shorts where I shorted the exact top. Shout out to Fabian O Polito ninety seven. God bless you, man. Um, I will probably never leave the country again legally. The way things are going, so I doubt I will ever be able to come to Germany. Shouldn't have said that on YouTube. The 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 low energy the last couple of days, crypto savvy. I'll tell you, man. I uh, I'm tired, man. It's uh, it's a holiday season for me, and so I over the weekend I was not sleeping very much, and then Monday I was not sleeping very much. I had uh, religious services Monday night, religious services all day Tuesday, and uh, like I said, I haven't been sleeping a lot. I've been doing a lot of work outside. I'm just kind of run down, man. Just kind of run down. Um, so, you know, it's just it's just one of those seasons. I'm trying to rest up, but uh, you know, uh, do I use Market Cipher SR? No, not really. I don't. Uh, I I do use the VWAP on Market Cipher SR, but that's just a regular old VWAP. Um, yeah, uh, did I see your tweet, Jake S? No, I didn't. Let me go check it out, man. Let me go to Twitter.com. Let's see here. Twitter.com. How am I going to see your tweet? Do I have to go to my own my own thing, my own profile, Jason Casper? I don't even I don't know how to even see my own thing. Uh, hmm, profile maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't see your tweet then, Jake. Maybe maybe you got tweeted, but uh, yeah, guys, let's uh, if you guys could retweet this, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter and retweet the stream. That way, maybe maybe we still have a chance of getting 750 likes on this stream. What do you guys think? Uh, I think no, right? But yeah, follow me on Twitter. Uh, retweet the stream. Um, shout out to David. Thanks for being here, David. Christian Charles wants to know, should I short? Well, Christian, here's one piece of advice I can give you. Never ever oh hey my friend Chris is calling me one second guys yo What's up, bro? bro I'm live on YouTube right now man can I call you back oh, for sure. cool all right peace sorry about that y'all oh what was I gonna say um hmm I forget. Oh, right. You should never enter a trade because you ask somebody on YouTube whether you should short. That is always the worst idea. Always. You should be able to do your own analysis. And, um, you know, hey, you know what's funny? I've actually been recording this the whole time. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. You should, <laughs> you should be able to do your own analysis and uh, know that uh, it's a good or bad time to... Um, what trade am I flopping and groping? No, I wasn't flopping and groping on a trade. I was I was flopping and groping uh, on my phone trying to text somebody. Um, yeah, if I do limit orders, I usually... I Okay, if I'm doing limit orders, I don't do take profits in advance. I sometimes do stop loss in advance, but the stop loss is always very loose, right? It's always very loose because I'm using good risk management. I could do like a 50%, a 50% stop, right? I could I could just do a 50% stop. Let's see here. Here we go. Now, we're back in action, guys. 50, 75% stop loss um, because I'm only risking that 1%, even if I'm high leverage trading it, you know. Um, shout out to OM53, who loves Jason Casper. I love OM53. I love them. Yeah, they're awesome. Um Um, okay. Uh, any uneven buttocks on the charts today? Do we have any uneven buttocks on the charts? Well, let's take a look at the charts, guys. You know, definitely, definitely not for Solano. Uh, wait, Solano is currently printing a bullish div right here at support on the 12-minute. 
Uh, Solano is printing a bullish div on the six minute kind of, uh, but not not as not as nice, not as nice on the six minute. But I don't really see any uneven buttocks. If we go over to Bitcoin, Bitcoin has really speaking of butt talks. You guys want to talk about butt talks? All right, let's 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 take a look at the old corn here. Uh, let's take a look at the old Bitcoin here. Speaking of butt talks, you know, on the three-hour time frame, well, not anymore. <laughs> it looked like we were going to get some uneven butt talks on the three-hour time frame, but last night we were getting uneven butt talks on the two-hour time frame, which is why I posted in the Discord that I really think we were going to get a move up soon, because you can't get uneven butt talks on the on the two-hour time frame and expect that we're going to come down more, right? You just can't. You just cannot. So. You know, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Uh, Christian Charles, are you talking about uh, Bitcoin? You see bearish divs? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we got a nice rejection off of this line here. But um, let me pop back into the, into the chat here. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Fish... Inky Largo, I'm glad to hear that uh, my advice saved you from getting a loss. I don't really use stop loss and high leverage trades, Antoine. I do, but like, here's the thing: if I'm going to high leverage trade, it means I'm I'm expecting that I'm going to be shorting the top or longing the bottom, right? And the reason I'm using high leverage is not so that I can take 100% of my capital. If I have $1,000, I'm not using 50x leverage so I can put $50,000 on my trade. If I have only $1,000 in my account, I would 50x leverage so I could put $500 on the trade, right? Because $10% is 1% of $1,000. And so if I'm only going to risk 1% and I'm confident I have a very good entry, I could 50x leverage, which I never do. Let's say I have 30x leverage. Okay, now I have, instead of putting $10 on a trade, I can put $300 on a trade and still only risk $10. It's better than using 1x leverage and putting $10 on the trade risking 1%. Okay? Of course, there's other ways to do it. You could use 1x leverage and use more of your account and have the stop loss be at a place which would equal 1% of your total trading account. But that's actually harder to do in the moment. It's harder to do that math in the moment. If you know I'm going to 25x leverage this many contracts and this is always going to be 1% of my account, you don't have to think about it. When price is moving, you don't have to sit there with your dang calculator. No. You know? You just go right into the trade. You know, okay, I'm going to put 300 contracts on this trade at 20x leverage. I have $1,000. I keep my leverage at 20. I'm going to put 300 contracts on it. Boom. I'm sorry. Leverage at 30, 300 contracts, $1,000, risking 1%. Boom. You don't need a stop loss because if you get stopped out or if you get liquidated, it's only 1%. I do prefer to use the stop loss before your liquidation price because the fees will be less. But the truth is, if you're confident in your entry, like the trades I just went over today, where everything's pointing and yelling at you that, yeah, this is a good trade, you can, you can do it, and, and you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. Not financial advice, guys. Not financial advice. Shout out to OM53. I know OM53 is all about the uneven butt talks. Isn't that right, OM53? Um, am I bullish or bearish? You know... That's tough to say. I'm neutral, guys. You know, obviously the Bitcoin Bitcoin is the the market, um, the big dog, the the big boy, the uh, the gluteus maximus grandeus of um, of crypto. And uh, you know, I mean, when I look at the weekly time frame, when I look at the three day, right? What do I see? I see that we uh, formed a high, had a massive drop, uh, came and formed a bottom, came up and then got a very hard rejection off of a very important resistance, putting in a lower high. Which makes me think it's very possible that we just continue a downtrend, right? I mean, if this was the one hour time frame, what would we, what would we think about this? We would think, oh, we're rejecting off the golden pocket and we're going to come down lower. Uh, but because it's on the three-day time frame, people are like, oh, no, you know, 100K. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Bearish divergence on the three-day time frame. You know? 
money flow on the three day time frame. Uh, you know, we go to we go to the, the to the daily time frame. You know, look at look at how weak this kind of looked here. Money flow coming down massively. Bearish divergence. Am I bullish or bearish? I don't know. I really don't know, guys. All I do know is that I want to I want to trade this, and I don't care about where it goes. So I have a plan right now to short higher than we're at and long lower than where we're at. And right now, I'm short on Bitcoin from up here, and I'm long on Bitcoin from down here. So literally, whatever happens right now, I'm set because both of those trades, I've taken profits out. I've taken about 50% of the position out halfway in the middle from the short and the long, right? I'm, I'm sh I, I shorted the Bitcoin at 52.8, and then I longed the Bitcoin at 43.6. So I don't really care what happens now, right? Because if any either of these trades get stopped out in profit, right? Like I've got my stop loss. I've taken 50% of the position out, made a whole bunch of money on both of these trades, a lot of money. They were good trades. Have a stop loss here. Have a stop loss here. If my short gets stopped out in massive profit, then my long will just have tons more profit. And if my long gets stopped out in massive profit, then my short will just have tons more profit. And I don't really know if I'm bullish or bearish, uh, and I don't really care, but I would say just objectively, I would probably say, ah, oh, man, right now, unless we come above, it, this is very important, unless we come above this, uh, this golden pocket resistance, I'm bearish, unless we come above this. And we're in, we're in no man's land here. In fact, let me do some quick Bitcoin TA. This is something I noticed recently, and I know a lot of other people have noticed this as well. Okay, but some people, Joe Pippin, White Phoenix, were pulling out some ranges. And it's just so interesting to notice that we had a low volume node right here. And we had a low volume node right here. And we literally traded from low volume node to low volume node. Now, we know that from the dump in May until the end of July, we were trading in this range and we were noticing the similarities between the range we traded from May to July as the range we traded in January. The point of controls were very similar. The daily levels and stuff like that, the, 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 the wicks, we were swing failure patterning, you know, lows here, back here. Notice something. When Elon Musk pulled out his Twitter machine and put, put us up to this high range, I call this the Elon Musk range. I call this the Elon Musk range. We have the value area low and we have the value area high. And um, then we have the point of control. What we never really did was form a range in this area. okay? But we do have a value area high and a value area low and a point of control in this range. It is possible right now that we just range here for a while. That's very possible, um, and that's kind of where my where I'm where I'm thinking at because you know we can look at this as like levels on a house, right? We have the first floor, the second floor, the third floor. We didn't spend much time on the second floor, and so it feels like we're in no man's land because Elon Musk just went whoop, tweeted us up, and then you know he went whoop, tweeted us down. You guys know I I I know it wasn't because of Elon Musk that this happened, but I like to say that, and. Um, so now it feels like we're in no man's land. I will not get bullish until we come above here, and I will not get bearish until we come below here, which makes me think we might just range in here for a while, right? Everyone's waiting for higher or lower. It's possible we just range in here for a while, you know? And actually, that would be healthy. That would, actually, that would be bullish to me. If we ranged in here for a while, that would be quite bullish to me because it would allow these, these divergences to cool off it would allow us to uh, probably uh, start to put in some, some hidden bullish divergences, right? We'd probably see a lot of uh, s um, selling pressure getting absorbed if we started to range in here. It, it would be probably pretty nice. So that, that answers the question. V, R, X, by, Y, T. Um... 
What happens if there is a bullish divergence and a bearish divergence? Well, trade the most recent divergence or just stay out. Red diamond on the 45 minute. Uh, we're going down. Are we going down? I mean, probably. Let's zoom in here. Let's go to the. I don't use the 45 minute, I use the 48 minute. Um, I mean, you know, we could, we could come down. We, I, honestly, I, I think we're probably, if I had to just look at the, this on Market Cipher, I feel like we're going to get a move up after a retrace. I, I feel like we're going to get a retrace and then money flows crossing up, print a green dot here. We might do something like this, come back down, bounce off that resistance, come up here. And if we come up here, guys, honestly, this is where I'm kind of hoping that we could, we could do something like this, where... We put in this, we come down a little bit, put in another high. Everyone thinks we're breaking out. And then we actually are printing bearish div on the uh, market cipher, bu -bu -bu bizzle And then, boom. Right? That's kind of what I would like if I was going to enter another short. But until then, I'm just going to hold out on my short, guys. Also, check out jasoncaspertrading.com. 30% uh, discount in the description. Uh, to get into the private Discord, patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. Um, I'm going to have to cut the stream kind of soon, guys. I've got some uh, things to do. Um, Jake S. is going to be deranged after this. How come? Um, a bearish divergence, yes. That means the market is likely to come down. Or follow CryptoFace, LOL, JK. Well, the thing is, I mean, if you're in CryptoFace's Discord and you can see that uh, what he's planning for, then yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, in fact, you know what's funny? Not funny, but the, the, I'm, I'm long from 34K. That was a trade call that CryptoFace made in the Market Cypher Discord. He made that call. Um, I was thinking about long in there. Didn't really have... Uh, too much confidence, but you know, CryptoFace said he's long, and I'm like, all right, there we go. Longed it, still in the long, still in the dang long. It's up like over a thousand percent. Of course, I only have forty percent of the original position in there, but you got to think, forty percent of the original position at twelve hundred percent is like one hundred percent of the position at like you know five hundred percent. So, it's still a big chunk. Still a big chunk. And I'm just taking little chunks out. I'm taking 10% out here. Every time we get a new high, taking out 10%, 10%, 10%. Just letting it ride. Hoping I can ride that thing up to 100K. Shout out to Gianni. I'm glad you can be here live. Is there a bearish divergence on Bitcoin right now? No, there is not. There is not, Sanju. A bearish divergence is when we have... Let's see if I can find one. Let's go to XR Pizzle. A bearish divergence is when we uh, print a higher high and the momentum waves are printing a lower high. And also, it makes it even more powerful if money flow is printing a lower high as well. It makes it even more powerful. So, all right, guys, I'm going to actually have to cut the stream. But um, thank you, everybody, for retweeting this on Twitter. Thank you for sharing this stream. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys for being here. I do pray that all of you are blessed in the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, and receive this blessing in the Hebrew language. The purpose of this blessing is that the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of everything, would place his name upon you and bless you. Yevarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha ya'er Adonai panav elecha v'chunecha Yisa Adonai Panav Elecha V'yasem Lecha Shalom. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach Elohei Israel, which in English means, May the Lord bless you. May He protect you. May He shine His light upon you and may He have grace upon you. And may He look toward you and give you completeness and wholeness and peace in the name of Jesus the Messiah, the God of Israel. Amen. Alright guys, shout out to Johan Morales who thought I was on mute, but it was just him. And on that note, peace.